All right, welcome back, everyone. This week's Pigeon of the Week is being brought to you by Flowers Garden Center. Hey, April 1st is right around the corner. They're going to open it up right there, 4550 Edens Creek Road, right here in Nashville. Our first picture here, this is uh, uh, Brooklyn Fuquay. She just recently went with us to Real Foot Lake. She was guided by Billy Blakely, the one and only Billy Blakely from Blue Bank Resort. And that was the very first crappie she's ever caught was right there. And that is a monster crappie. I mean, it's hard to, it's hard to imagine anything bigger than that crappie. So good job, Brooklyn. You, at least she fed part of us. <laughs> oh, here is Calvin Cothern, the owner of Cunningham Motors in Springfield, Tennessee. Calvin is holding up a really nice eight pound, eight pound plus largemouth that he recently caught just this week on Kentucky Lake. Great, great job there, Calvin. Awesome fish. And there you got Tanner Hale. Tanner Hale is, uh, has got that one right there. He caught that. That is on uh, from Lake Dardanelle. He is in Arkansas uh, on Lake Dardanelle practicing for the College Bass Classic. So uh, they're all on Lake Dardanelle. And good, good job. He's representing MTSU, ladies and gentlemen. Tanner Hale. All right, and this is Wayne Hooper. Wayne Hooper just recently went out to Kentucky Lake and said, Hugh, I had to show you this one. Uh, let me see, how big is that one? I'm, I'm looking in. I don't see it. Uh, it's not on there. But it's huge, and, and I, I believe it's over eight pounds, uh, but it's Wayne Hooper on Kentucky Lake. My next one here. Oh, here's some here's somebody that you, you may remember from uh, uh, he used to fish high school bass fishing team. Now he's on a college bass fishing fishing team, and he's a 6.12 pound caught uh, by Tristan Crowder of Lawrenceburg on March 12th out of Wilson Lake. Uh, had a really really good job there. That's a good one. And then right here is Tristan Crowder along with his dad, Blake Crowder, and they caught these five bass on Wilson Lake, March 12th. The largest largemouth weighed 8.8 .8 pounds. The largest smallmouth was over six. So great job, that's a lot of fish. Right? Here's my boy, Stacy Dunley. Uh, great, great guy, Stacy Dunley from Grundy County. He just recently went out to Nicky Jack and said he and his son, their five biggest bass weighed over 24 pounds. And look at the guts on those big guts on those girls. They've been eating good for a while now. That's no, that's just ridiculous. All right, and then we got Caleb Graves and his friend Dawson Ray with a first place finish this past weekend on Percy Priest Lake in their first high school tournament of 2016 with 15 pounds of fish. I don't believe that's the right picture. There's the ones for the for the uh, high school team right there. Our picture before that was Josh Graves and Ricky Clemens uh, Tuesday on Percy Priest Lake with a second place finish in the FOP tournament, and they had 16 pounds. So uh, got the pictures mixed up just a little bit, but you get the message. A lot, a lot of fine fish being caught. You can send your pictures to us here. Southern Woods and Waters, 474 James Robertson Parkway, Nashville, Tennessee, 37219. Or simply email them to me at Hugh at southernwoodsandwaters.com. We'll get them on here really, really fast. Uh, just, uh, just to tell you, though, a lot of those pictures are coming in recently. Fish are biting. It is, it is officially on. It's Turkeys on. are gobbling, hens are clucking, bass are biting. <laughs> and I want to say that those those college kids to catch that many bass on that cold drop temperature oh, yes. drop is awesome. It is. Those guys know what they're doing. We didn't have that opportunity, no. did we? <laughs> what happened? I'm ready to go back to school. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I didn't, they didn't have fishing clubs when I was no, in school. No, no. Our fishing club started on Saturday mornings. Nah, that was pretty much it. <laughs> but I tell you what, a lot of great kids out there, they're getting to do high school school and college uh, we're we're so proud of all of them just they do a great great job representing a, a entire university or an entire high school and getting out there and doing what you love to do you can't ask for anything better but turkey hunting has to be right up there with it absolutely I, I am so fired up over these kids getting to go this is I'm like you I've seen all right I must give you my scenarios. As I've seen just yesterday, mm -hmm. I saw 16 hens and two longbeards together. Yep. That was in one spot. 
I went on down the road about another mile and a half or so. Twelve hens and two long beards with oats. Right. What's happening right now? All right, we we are at the point where the winter flocks have broken up. Mm -hmm. That's the key. We can't really do much with them until that that flock breaks up. Right. Now, what we are what we're going to continue to see is you'll see 12 and 15 now. Uh, maybe as as early as this weekend, we'll start seeing those gobblers with five, mm -hmm. four. The groups will get smaller, but the gobblers will get spread out more. When they're in the key big flocks early on, I mean, you've got 35 or 50 hens right. followed by 25 gobblers, 12 or 25. Now we're breaking up, and they'll, they're starting to spread out across the landscapes. The, hen, the hens will start moving towards areas that they've already picked out to nest in. That's when. What's things, a good area for a hen to nest in? Let's give them some. All right. Uh, good places uh, will be areas that have good over cover. Right. They want to nest Underneath. under something and against something. In other mm -hmm. words, uh, you know, a log or and, and under a bush or mm -hmm. under an overhang. I have found them out in open fields under under uh, blackberry briars. Oh yeah. And and things like that. So. Overgrown blackberry fields uh, are good places. Cut uh, recently cut over areas like uh, that have been clear cut. Clear cut. Hit That's pretty right. hard where there's lots of tops down. Mm -hmm. Those are prime uh, uh, nesting nesting sites. If you're in a woods that lacks that, you're going to find those hens will tuck their their nests right up against a tree or an old fence post right. or something something that provides a little more complicated uh, structure than just a tree sitting out in the open. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, they seem to like cedars. Oh yeah, in, in open woods. In open woods, yes. Yeah. And so, so those are the those are the areas uh, that you'll see them start to gravitate towards, uh, more so over the next the coming week. But once they've broken up into those really small groups, game on. That's I mean, right. This is when this is when things really get exciting. This weekend, when when the kids get out, you're going to find that they're out there with, um, still in these larger groups, and you'll you'll find that three or four gobblers will have pretty much taken that group over. Mm -hmm. Out in the peripheral, there'll be one or sometimes even two gobblers that have been pushed back. Now, it doesn't mean that they're not dominant birds. Uh, it, I was telling That's you right. before. Before before the show started, right in my own yard, we had a four-year-old uh, gobbler that had set up on some hens. Three two-year-olds outnumbered him. It's like a street gang. You know? I mean, they just walked him off of those hens, beat him up pretty hard. But you know what? He's still out there around the edges. So, how that plays into your your strategy this coming weekend is don't crowd the the roosts right uh there's the 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 area around those roosts are too open right now there's it haven't we haven't leafed out enough mm -hmm. that you want to get right up on them and try to call them when they hit the ground in addition there's too many mines to make up in a big roost you've got lots of hens and you'll uh, uh, hunters sometimes will overplay their calling yes uh the the way you separate good good turkey hunters from poor turkey hunters is good turkey hunters call and as soon as the turkey gobbles they're done they're done had an old timer tell me he said when that turkey cuts you off gobbles over your call take that call of yours and throw it as far as you can throw it. <laughs> that's right that's right because they know exactly where you are yeah and, and and but the the point that he was making and the point that that, that i would make to to uh, young hunters out there is when that turkey has cut you off, in other words, he's gobbled right over your call, put the call down. You've sold it. That's right. It's like a salesman that keeps selling after the guy says, I want it. That's right. You know, you, you, leave it alone. Leave it alone. Let him let him come on. He, he and may, he knows where you are. He may run at you or he may take him 20 minutes. That's right. But he's coming. He's coming. Yep. The only thing I, uh, that I would do sometimes, sometimes you kind of get a sense that they, they'll start gobbling like, I need some more information. I won't yelp at him. I'll just give him a single cluck. That's it. 
And if and if he if he hits on that cluck, he's going to the freezer. He's coming. <laughs> he's mine. <laughs> he's yours. Well, I tell you what, we got a, we got our product of the week, and we want to go to that right now. So let's go see it. Hey, we're here again at the Tennessee Boat and Fishing Show at the fairgrounds. With me is my good friend Chris Snow, Snow Spin. Now, Chris, this is a tip. This is your go-to when, every, when the chips are down. Yep. Uh, I call these two baits my bailout baits. My bailout baits. My bailout baits. <laughs> if I'm fishing a tournament and I need fish really quick without zeroing the tournament or keep my points up in the tournament, I call this my bailout bait, but actually all this is is a, is a little darter head, eighth ounce darter head, and a, a zoom finesse one. I'll try to fish this on a uh, real light line, six pound test, and uh, another, okay. another, let me hold this one right. for you. Another application is just called the shaky head worm. I mean, this thing right here is probably the universal fish catcher. Anybody can fish it, and it actually catches big fish. I've caught some really nice large mouth on, on a little four-inch worm. But when times it gets tough, you know, the water's cold. Uh, whether it's due to fishing pressure or whatever. And they're a little finicky? A little finicky, but the shaky head or the darter head now, worm now, no. will bail you out. Chris, how do you fish this one with the darter head? I just fish it look just just like a regular worm. Uh, just drag it and drag it. The unique thing about the shape of this head is that when you pull it up, the darter heads like to go this way, it's like to go this way, it's like to go straight down. And uh, it's kind of like the old slider head. Okay. And uh, but, uh, this thing right here will bail you out when you're in trouble. And it works on Kentucky Lake, Chickamauga, Gunnersville, anywhere you want to go. All right. Well, Chris, I can't I can't leave you without saying, you know, Chris is a, a proprietor of Snow Spin Lures, and you make all kinds of different lures from from the the whirly bee like things. All, all all the way to, to uh, uh, buzz baits, to swim bait hooks, and all that. How can they get a hold of you? Uh, you can reach me at snowspinbaits.com. Snowspinbaits.com. All your information's on it, phone number, my email address. And, and, uh, I just invite you to check us out. We'll and I tell you what, usually he's in, the, he's in the boat. Either I'm with him or he's with me, but you can catch us both. Or you can go to our website at southernwoodsandwaters.com. We're going to have a link to snowspin.com or snowspinlures.com. Snowspinbaits.com. So check them out. And thank you, Chris, for that great tip. All right, we're going to take you back to the studio for more of Southern Woods and Waters.